midweek wrap up is back to what it usually does when we have a very droll Raw and SmackDown. We can always look forward to an entertaining episode of NXT, followed by an entertaining episode of Lucha Underground. Absolutely. And that's exactly what we got this week. Got a lot of really Ooh. good uh, storyline build here on NXT. Uh, we had Heavy Machinery taking on uh, Victor Andrews and formerly known as Dylan Miley, now known as Lars Sullivan in tag team action. Uh, Lars was in first and was actually like beating the hell out of Tucker Knight. Yeah. Uh, was actually taking it to him. Eventually got Tucker down, and then Victor has said, "Hey, tag me in. I can, you know, I can, I can go from here." Uh, and as soon as he got tagged in, it was all downhill for the uh, for the rookie team. Uh, Heavy Machinery ended up just keeping Andrews on their side for the rest of. Uh, for the rest of the match, and eventually hit him with what they call the compactor, which makes sense. It is a very apropos name for the move. Uh, and just like we saw last time we saw Lars Sullivan on TV, he was none too happy with his tag team partner and completely destroyed him. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure which name I like better. I mean, Lars Sullivan's cool, but I, I didn't see anything wrong with Dylan Miley. Yeah, Lars Sullivan to me feels like they're trying too hard. Yeah, trying trying to make him sound more intimidating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you yeah, yeah. Dylan Miley. It's a it's a very it's not a name you'd expect a scary person to have, and then yeah. when that person ends up being scary, it's extra scary. Uh, we had Roderick Strong uh, come out and talk about how you know now that he has he's moved past sanity. He is, uh, you know, he's, he's focused on making a better life for his family. He's appreciating all of the good feedback that he's getting from the NXT universe for the, uh, you know, the story that was told on the Who is Roderick Strong. And he's just, he's feeling the love and he's looking forward to getting a shot at the NXT championship. To which Bobby Roode says, slow your roll there, partner. And... Got a lot of really good cheap heat with this promo. Yeah. Came out with a fake moderate, crying. Moderately attractive fiancé and your fairly normal Rules. looking oh. son. Yeah, no, when it, when you take the when you take the cheap shots of the family, you immediately get that heat. Uh, and that's exactly what Bobby Roode was looking for. Yeah. And he told him that he'd do him a solid. He says, Hey, you know what? When your boy you know, next time, you know, you you and I are at a show together. You come back. We'll take a picture. So that way when your boy's old enough, you can show him and be like, hey, check this out. Here's a picture. Here's the champ, and here's your old man. I'll do that for you. But until then, you know, good luck with whatever you're planning on doing. And Bobby Roode walked away. And so, yeah, Roddy, Roddy might have a little, uh, little bit of a chip on his shoulder after that. Yeah, promo. yeah. He might be looking to uh, exact a little bit of revenge against... Uh, the words of one Bobby Roode. Um, something wrong with Nikki Cross. Yeah. I mean, we knew that, but when she sits on a roof by herself and slams against a generator and is talking to Asuka and Ruby Riot when they're not actually there... And abuses her coat. Yeah. What did that coat ever do to you, Nikki? It's chilly on a roof. Come on. Yeah. Keep that coat on. Well, to be fair, her coat doesn't have sleeves. It's not really going to do. Well, it's for people that have okay arms but chili torsos. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah, she's uh, preparing for the triple threat next week. To um, work out. Yeah. Know, what we didn't see is she went up and down those stairs like 80 times. Oh, okay. That Get the cardio sense. going. Yeah. We also had uh, Ember Moon kind of say her piece about the... Uh, the match next week that you know she's she's still sour on the fact that she lost her first attempt didn't get a chance to go for the second and so now she's just she's looking forward to making her third attempt the opportunity she's looking to make that the one where she wins the championship but she's focused on finishing things with Peyton Royce and Billy Kay first yeah speaking Meaning they just need to draw a time out till whatever the next takeover is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of Peyton Royce, she would take on Sarah Logan. Sarah Logan's first singles match yeah. uh, since becoming Sarah Logan yeah. uh, on NXT. That's almost like a Netflix movie. Sarah Logan? Becoming Sarah Logan. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah, it does. Um, 
It's like whoever made the Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah. Makes a sequel. <laughs> Uh, she had some good, she had some good solid offense, uh, was in control of Peyton Royce for a bit. She got a chance to get herself over a little. Yeah. Um, she didn't come up on the winning side of things, but I think she did make a really good first impression as to how, you know, I mean, she's still crazy Mary Dobson. She's just got a different look and a different name. She's got, she's really got the same, like, ferocity and the same type of, uh, wrestling style. That hasn't changed at all. It's definitely unique to see her without the uh, like gothic eyeliner and like the contacts in though. Yeah. She still comes out to death metal though. That's that's still a thing. She's still coming out to that heavy metal. We call uh, it hunter metal. Hunter metal. But yeah, she uh, she went on a good flurry, but eventually Peyton Royce took it back, uh, hit her with a nice uh, combo of forearms and elbows, and then finished it off with the uh, f- fisherman suplex and defeated Sarah Logan. We also had another really cool authors of pain vignette. I'm really I like these the vignettes. They're, it's their profile or I, I guess their portfolio of destruction as it continues to grow. Like you get to see more and more of what they've done yeah. over the course of their time in NXT, and it's it's more and more impressive. And plus having Paul Ellering as the mouthpiece and how very poetic he is as far as his uh, his manager status is. It's it, it may it makes for a very intimidating presence and actually yeah. makes them seem scary and dominant and a very imposing threat. Yeah, on the tag team my division. my the part that I enjoyed the most out of this promo was essentially the fact that they called out all the other teams on the roster. Yeah. Uh, good guys and bad guys alike. Yeah, yeah no, they, they, he he specifically called out Heavy Machinery. He called out uh, Riddick Moss and Tina Sabatelli, and he call, and he called out Sanity. Yeah. So you know the the three actual tag teams on the roster, other than uh, well, yeah, other than the Authors of Pain. You know, he he said very straightforward. It's you know. Though I do hear rumors of swirling that we might be closer to the return of TM61 than we thought. Ooh. That'd be There's nice. been, there, there was a rare TM61 sighting in Ocala, Florida the other day. Oh. Well, all right. I like the sound of that. TM61 can't come back soon enough. Uh, we got a little bit more of uh, story build with Andrade as uh, uh, the new... The new backstage interviewer, Kayla St. Cloud, I think is what her name is. It's a really cool name. Uh, she was trying to get... It's a knockoff Taylor Swift with a porn star name. Maybe. Uh, she was trying to get some comments from Andrade after he lost to uh, uh, Caesar... Cesar Bononi. Bononi. I, I couldn't Caesar remember. salad bologna sandwich. <laughs> Gross. Um, that is, that's not a combo. Um, she was trying to get some words on, you know, how he felt after losing to, to Cesar, uh, and he was confronted by a woman who most of us know as Thea Trinidad, yeah. who said, oh, is, is this, is this who you are now? Is this what you do? And then slapped the shit out of him and then walked away. So there have been rumors that Thea Trinidad has been signed by NXT, and it looks like they might be going with a family type route with the, yeah. uh, with the two of them. That could be cool. See what Thea can... She's a great wrestler. Yeah. Uh, she did good stuff while she was in TNA for a little bit. Um, and I've seen a lot of her uh, her indie stuff, so... And she's going to be in that movie with uh, Tessa Blanchard. The... That's right. The uh, the Page, Page Family biopic. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll see where that goes. Uh, then we had Oni Lorcan versus Hideo Itami, where, boy, if you wanted a match where you heard every single strike thrown, this was it. Yeah. They beat the shit out of each other. They had some Lucha Underground level audio quality in this match. No, they were like every like every shot, whether it was a shot to the stomach, whether it was a like a drop kick, whether it was uh, just a punch to the jaw, like even clotheslines were just making so much sound in this match. Yeah, and the like I thought the story here was Hideo having that chip on his shoulder after losing to Bobby Roode. Uh, it kind of wrong place, wrong time for Oni Lorcan. 
Yeah, but you know, you know Oni wasn't the one. He wasn't backing down by any means. He was no. giving it right back to. Him yeah, right it, it took a while for Oni to get warmed up, but he got a good offensive flurry in. Those those European those nasty European uppercuts he was throwing. Yeah, where he just launches himself at the person. Yeah, he's just a really tiny Cesaro. Is yeah, he, he, he used one of those and knocked Tadeo out of the ring, and then he jumped off the top rope, somersault, sent on all the way to the floor. Yeah. Uh, Hideo did a little, ooh, my knee hurts. Yeah, fe- yeah feign the injury. A little, little, little fake-out action. Drake had and, to, uh, Drake tried to back Oni up. And then kind of uh, be a little cheap way to ensure himself the upper hand in the match. Yeah, he, uh, he threw, threw the, the thrust kick right at the knee of Oni Lorcan, which backed him up. Uh, was an easy setup for a go-to-sleep, but Hideo was not done there as he would deliver... Two more, and almost a third after, well, uh, almost a fourth, to be exact, uh, before Cassius Ono came down and stopped him from the onslaught. Drake is literally like, he's, Drake's on the verge of, like, ending the match because Oni's not moving. Yeah. And then Cassius comes out, gets in Hideo's face, is like, what are you doing? This, this isn't you. What are you doing? And then Hideo decided it would be a good idea to shove Cassius, and Cassius is like, bitch, I'm like three times the size of you, and shoved Hideo down, to which he just up Shut and left. Shoved him on his ass. He just up and left. Drake just threw the match out. There was no no saving it at that point. So it was a, it was a bad day for Oni Lorcan. Um, not sure what type of a day it was for Hideo. He was just in a shitty mood. It was a day. Oh. oh. Yeah. And we'll probably be seeing Hideo versus Cassius Ono here very soon. I wouldn't be shocked. That'll probably be a takeover match at whatever the next takeover is, which is actually Brooklyn 3. Uh, it'll is be, it? Yeah, because they just uh, released the graphic for that. So, so still still down the road quite a ways. Yeah, we got a little over two months before the uh, before the next takeover. So we will see what happens. A lot which, of time to build. Yeah. Um, and we have Drew McIntyre in action next week, along with that... Uh, Elimination triple threat for the women's championship. Yeah. So we don't know who uh, who Drew McIntyre might be going against. I think there's a good chance he might get involved in the Sanity storyline. Maybe. Really. I think he, I think he's a good like I don't know. It's it's interesting. Like now they just have Jose in this Sanity storyline, which you know it it started it started with Ty Dillinger and he took off. It, then it went to Roddy, and, and Roddy, you know, made his way through. And now it's now it's Noe Jose, who's still kind of getting revenge for the attack during Access, yeah. uh, just before WrestleMania. So, which uh, ended up taking him out of uh, Takeover Orlando. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I'm very interested to see what direction Drew ends up going. Uh, Me too. Because I thought that he might start a thing with Andrade, and he didn't. Um, and then he's just kind of, kind of been here and there. He hasn't really had like a set direction yet, but, uh, maybe we'll find out next week. And then speaking of sanity, our main event was Killian Dane versus Noe Jose. Uh, these are two big Hoss boys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was, yes. it was, yeah, no, this yeah. was, what the fuck? That was an Oni Larkin sound. <laughs> Ugh. Um, yeah, no, th- this was just who could be stronger than the other. It was a, a lot of power game, uh, a lot of, you know, just massive body attacks. Um, not, neither Eric Young or Alexander Wolf getting involved, which yeah. was refreshing for a, well, for a sanity situation. Between the... the size and the meanness of Killian Dane. Yeah, you'd figure out of all the members of Sanity, he's the one that's gonna need the least help. That's true. Yeah. Um someone yeah. once tweeted at me that I looked like a mini Killian Dane. But I needed to grow my beard out. Yeah. I, yeah. I think if you if you had that big bushy beard hiding the bottom half of your face, yeah, and then just put all your hair in front of your face, you can pull it off. Uh, yeah, it was a good match for both of these guys. I thought Killian Dane did a good job 
uh, being in a singles match. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've seen no no Jose. He can pull off a good match. Uh, but uh, despite the uh, the willingness to want to get some revenge was not enough for no Way Jose, as Killian Dane would end up hitting Ulster Plantation. Yeah. As we were informed by Tom Phillips instead of Nigel McGuinness. Uh, which Ulster Plantation is a place in Ireland. Ulster is a province in Ireland. A province in Ireland. So, makes a lot more sense and is less disgusting than Ulster Plantation that we originally thought, thanks to Nigel's accent. Yeah. Uh, and Killian Dane did win and uh, is on the hashtag winning train. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I... Hashtag get Dane. <laughs> Hashtag winning Dane. <laughs> it's the Dane train. I heard you say Dad. <laughs> the winning Dane. <laughs> winning Dane. Um, yeah, solid episode of NXT. Uh, move on to... Uh, A solid episode of Lucha Underground. Yes. With more than one match. Yeah. We, we, are, we got some storyline build. We got some interesting news coming out of this one. Starting with uh, after the... Uh, all Night Long? Yeah, after the All Night, all night Long last week... Uh, we actually started with Puma, who, uh, before we went on break, had awoken from being in the uh, the coffin, the, the 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 casket match with Mel Mortes, uh, and was still being kind of coached and led by Vampiro. Uh, he's ha having one of those episodes where you know he's got all these visions going in his head, and he's trying to sort right from wrong. And Ray's trying to help him along. He's like, hey, I know you've been talking to Vampiro, and you shouldn't do that. I've known him for a while, and he's not going to help you. He's not your friend, and he's not your master. And to which Puma said, well, neither are you. And, oh, snap. And he walked away. So he wasn't, he didn't give a shit what Ray had to say. And then Ray saw Vampiro in the mirror and turned around, and Vampiro wasn't there. Because Ray is seeing visions, and Vampiro is super creepy. Yeah. Then we went to our sudden death match for the Lucha Underground Championship. Dario Cueto making this a false count anywhere, seeing as how Johnny had the advantage last week. He decided to put it a little bit more in favor uh, of the challenger, seeing as how Mac has been in multiple false count anywhere in matches. At uh, both Ultima Luchas. Yes. Um, and they picked up right where they left off last week and just... Continue to beat the fuck out of each other. Oh, I thought you meant where Johnny Mundo wins. Well, eventually. But, I mean, all the stuff that led up to that was great. Yeah, it was uh, a good match. It's very entertaining. Uh, less help for the Mac this week. The Mac is just so versatile. Yeah, he can, do, he can do everything. Like, the fact that he can keep up and do just as much as Johnny Mundo does yeah. is insane. But then he can also get in there and play the power game with people like Tejano. Yeah. Um, we had uh, Ricky Mandel come back out. So I think he's going to be the new Jack Evans from here on out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's there's there there's a good chance that we won't. I don't. I don't know. It's it's hard to tell what is happening currently with uh, with Lucha Underground. Um, but yeah, he uh, we you know, we didn't see Jack Evans last week, and we didn't see him this week either. Um, we still got Ricky Mandel and Pajama Black. Yeah, PJ ended up stopping Mac from being able to pull out a table, and then actually ended up going through the table himself. Uh, I don't even remember what took Mandel out. Sexy Star. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, Sexy Star ended up like chasing him Stripping off. Stripping him and then running him away. Yeah, Sexy just like randomly took his shirt off. Just I get, I, I get. She wanted to see if the Johnny Mundo workout was working. Oh, okay. Well, it was because. You know, Ricky Mandel's in pretty good shape. Uh, but yeah, she ends up running him off. PJ goes to the table. Uh, and then uh, early on in the match, we had Mac just get like this whole uh, this whole group of chairs right at the uh, right on the outside of the ring. Uh, to which, you know, a couple chairs got used. Joni ended up getting slammed on it and everything. Uh, and then Mac was going for a suplex, which ended up getting flipped around, and then I don't know what he was trying to go for towards the end here. He had him, like, almost, like, powerbomb, or, like... He's gonna go for the keystriver. 
Uh, oh. Wait, when he did that through the two tables out there. That's last right. Week. Okay, that would have fucking hurt. So I don't, I don't want to take that ass bump on chair. No pile of chairs. So in a way, he was kind of saved by Taya, who ended up pulling Johnny off of his shoulders. But uh, I guess it really wasn't saved because then Johnny did a sunset flap. Uh, sunset flop. Sunset a, flap. A sunset flip power bomb over the Mac to the floor, power bomb onto the chairs, and oh. Johnny Mundo is still the Lucha Underground champion. Uh, because I would not get up from that either. Uh, and then it was right after that that Dario Cueto announced the tournament, the 32-person tournament for the first ever Cueto, Cueto Cup. Cup. Uh, 32 people, single elimination tournament, starts next week. The winner will get a shot at the uh, at Ultima Lucha, Trace, for the Lucha Underground Championship. Yeah. Which... He then said that uh, the night that he awards the... Yeah, the, the finals, the same night of the finals of the Cueto Cup. Yeah. Rey Mysterio will challenge Johnny Mundo for the Lucha Underground Championship. So there's a good chance that, uh, you know, unless they lose it somewhere in between there, that the winner of the Cueto Cup will face either Johnny Mundo or Rey Mysterio at Ultima Lucha Trace. Uh, and Taya ended up delivering this bad news to... Uh, to Johnny, who took an extra long shower, uh, he's talking to Ricky Mandel in a, in a towel. Uh, Ricky Mandel didn't bring champagne because Taya told him not to, and so he's like, he's like, okay, well, uh, if I've got to do that, okay, uh, you know, hey, uh, Ricky, go go get the car ready. We, you know, I, I got to get to my dojo. And then he told Taya that he's like super nervous. <laughs> I didn't want the kid to see me afraid. <laughs> He's like, I, I, if, if I have to face Rey Mysterio, I have to train harder than I ever have before. Uh, and so he starts to take off, and Ty is like, Johnny, are you even gonna, are you even gonna put on pants? Johnny says, No, no time, time for pants. <laughs> oh man. And thus, for me, is that's like the career highlight for me for Johnny. Boone. <laughs> It, it was, it was, it was probably the best promo he's ever cut. Yeah. But that line specifically, no time for pants. Uh, we had the Super Friends taking on the Reptile Tribe in six-man, six-person, we uh, thought initially. Uh, Six-species tag match. Yes, for the Lucha Underground Trios Championships. There's a Phoenix, a Dragon, and a Time Traveler versus... One of the lizard guys from Journey to the Center of the Earth with a, Will Ferrell. A snake. snake lady and the Undersnaker. The unders that is the best. That might be one of the best things you've ever said. We he ends up hitting a tombstone on the outside, and he called Tombstone by the Undersnaker, and I about lost it. That was fantastic. Uh, You're but I gotta say, Arrow. I think this was the best match I've ever seen Arrow Star have. Like, he ran most of this match. Like, him and Pindar, I think, ran most of the match. Yeah. And they fucking killed it. It was great. Like, Aerostar usually, like, he's usually really good, but he has, like, a lot of botchy moments sometimes. Yeah. But I thought he hit everything very crisp, like, as perfect as he possibly could have in this one. Uh, then Vibora, Undersnaker, ended up getting tagged in. Uh, he ended up hitting the tombstone, I think, on Phoenix. Yeah, on the on outside. The, on the outside. Um, and the only people that never got tagged in up until the end were Cobra Moon and Drago. And Aerostar, you know, who had literally been running the entire match except for the little bit of help that he got from Phoenix, ends up going over to tag in Drago and gets the green mist. Yeah. And so then we find out that Cobra Moon was never actually in the match. She was literally like just posing as a team member over there. And. Which I didn't know you could do. I mean, you know. But Temple Rules can be shady. Yeah. Uh, to which we. Yeah. I, yeah, and then Pindar uh, knocked Aerostar off Snake Way. <laughs> what? That's what I'm going to call that. Crazy move that he did. Oh there. yeah, it, like he three sixty him into an X factor. It was yeah, it was ridiculous. 
And then they and then Vo, uh, Vibora and Pindar both held him up for the assisted splash. Drago hit a splash. And the snake hail. Drago lost and won the trios championships by pinning his partner slash opponent and winning for his new team while losing for his old team. That's the only part that that makes uh. me confused is I, I really feel like either Pindar or Vibora should have made the pin because Drago making the pin doesn't make sense. But I'll let it slide because I understand what they were going for. Um... So the dragon got collared, and they went back to their little snakeskin-covered BDSM dungeon. <laughs> that they did. And for the main event, we had ourselves a Boyle height street fight between Prince Puma and Mil Mortes. Yeah, Prince Puma came to play because he was wearing his regular street clothes. Yeah, he he, he was. He does have he, a street mask though. Well, Lucha Cash should have like special street fight masks. Street fight masks. They're like flannel and denim versions of their regular <laughs> masks. What the fuck? No. Don't make that a thing. No? No, no I don't think so. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mil Mortes didn't even realize he was there. He got shit whip drop kicked right off the bat. And these guys went everywhere in the temple. They're, they went to staircases I didn't even know existed. Yeah, they, did they go in through the door to Cueto's office? That I was unaware of before, or was it a weird angle that they no? Just it, it, it was a, it was a weird. What they did is uh, Morte because Puma ended up doing like a run. Up, there was like a stool over there, like where one of the like I don't know one of the camera guys sits. I don't know what the fuck he was doing there. But he ran out and he did like a like a flash kick, and then Morte got the advantage back and actually chucked him through the door. But they had a camera on the other side of the yeah. office. Looking so it looked through. like they were coming in from a different angle. Yeah. Which th totally threw me off. I thought there was a secret door to the office <laughs> we didn't know about. Uh, no, there's there's an extra window that we uh, that we didn't know camera people like to hang out by. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they got a, there was a little bit of action. Like Dario ended up like coming. Did Dario say like, "Don't spill my cup." Yeah, I, I don't know. He was like shining the Cueto cup or whatever, and like. I don't know, he said something, he just kept telling Mortes to get him out. Yeah, and then, like, Mortes, like, tried to give him the evil eye, and then Quato just picked up the red bull yeah, figurine. Like, don't, like, don't fuck with me. Like, at first I thought he had, like, a red gun. No, that's why I, I thought it was a squirt gun at first. I was like, why is it red? And I was like, is that a, it's like, what is he going to do? He was just holding the bull by the like leg. Like a gun. <laughs> he was going to shoot him with it. I thought it was going to fucking do anything. Oh, it was ridiculous. Oh man, yeah, they just, they fucking, they went everywhere. Then Muertes hit Puma on the outside with a power slam that looked like a hurt. Oh yeah, yeah, big old, big old power slam. Uh, yeah, and Puma just like arched up as much as he possibly could and was just like, oh fuck, that hurt. Um, the ring was a mess by the end of this match because... Yeah, they threw a garbage can in and it was full. Yeah, it was everything. Like, it, they looked like they were wrestling in it. was a trash it. match. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a garbage match. It was not no the, In match, the best the, way possible. The match was good. It wasn't the match itself wasn't garbage. Uh, but eventually, Puma like is in the driver's seat, totally like on point, about to win. Uh, and then yeah, he squashes him with the six thirty. Yeah, and then uh, Mortes actually kicks out, and then he's like. Puma crawls over to the ropes and gets blasted in the face with the rock from uh, from Katrina. Yeah, yeah. And so both of them are down for a second. And then and then it's like, okay, you know, where, where's this going to go from here? And Vampiro's like, mine's bigger and handsome a brick. <laughs> yeah, and so Puma has this brick in his hand, and Mortates runs at him for like a close Probably line. Probably a spear. Something like that, but he ends up getting blasted in the face with the brick. So Puma ends up winning the match uh, with the help of Vampiro, and yeah, it's, so the the ring is just a mess at this point. The whole this whole night was just there's so much Messy. happening, so much happening in Lucha Underground. There's green mist and bricks and chairs and, and trash no and, and yeah, no pants. Johnny's pants are somewhere. They're just hanging out in the locker room. It's Chaos. It's chaos in the temple. But Lucha Underground is 
back, super fun, and I'm excited to see who all is going to be in this 32-person tournament. Yeah. Uh, if they I definitely think there's going to be a lot of one-offs, and I definitely think there's going to be a lot of regular Lucha Underground people in new mask gimmicks for you think so? to, to job. You think so? Yeah. All right. Uh, the, uh, we do know that Mil Muertes and Prince Puma are in it. Yeah. Those are the ones we know for sure. Uh, so the other 30 participants we are not aware of, but you could probably imagine people like Tejano, uh, Son of Havoc, uh, maybe even um, Dr. Wagner. Um, yeah, I mean, it, there, there, could, there could be anybody. The possibilities are endless. And that is it for the midweek wrap up. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Click the links down in the description. There's a lot of links. Check out the podcast. That's one of the links. Where you get all of these reviews. Nothing special this week. We're just keeping it chill this week. Yeah. Because we got shit to do next week. Also, check out Reasonable Wrestling Fans. That's Reasonable the W. Like, like wrestling. wrestling. Let us know what you like over there. Check out the uh, first five episodes of the Hocktail Hour. Check out the first six episodes of Fantasy Warfare, along with a plethora of other videos. Uh, yeah, but for yeah, now, yeah. guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you at whatever video you decide to watch next. Still fuck that is something from last time. Yeah, no, we, we gotta say it twice because he decided to be on 205 Live. I guess we technically have to say it like 205 times. I'm sure at this point... That'll be unreasonable wrestling pants. Yeah. <laughs>